how should we do it? Then uh, the important point that you made is the transfer point. Indeed, you're right. In the end, if we're not willing to give in, we have to pay transfer, or we're losing all that. Uh, the whole thing breaks apart. We're losing all our savings, all the German savings, as I said, going to uh, the rest of the world, and we can lose them all, uh, or we're paying transfers. Transfers is, is uh, on the other hand, is a big problem because it, uh, we see it already. The one who gives uh, tends to dominate the, de uh, the, the debate and tends to uh, be the one who, who rules over those who receive the money. That will not work in Europe. It is working not very well in Germany, uh, but it works to a certain extent, but it never uh, worked out in a way that we have really equal feelings on both sides uh, of the former German border. And so far, it's not so simple. And the, the same is true for fiscal and political union. You can ask for that, but nevertheless, uh, I think my point was right. The first thing that you have to do, you have to agree on this uh, core of the economic policy concept, namely that real wages should rise like productivity. If you don't get that, forget about the rest. So, um, in, in so far, uh, I think we, we, are, we have uh, uh, to do, we have really a big task before us and we cannot, we cannot just uh, hope that we, um, that, we, that we get easily through anywhere and that we find majorities. It's, someone said it, it's uh, a question of further work on enlightenment. Thank you very much. Jamie? Uh, um, I very much appreciate it. Um, but there, there was one point that I'll we'll take exception. We said several times that there was not yet a fire in the house. There is a fire in the house. One of the houses is burning right now. And that fire, if it is not contained and extinguished, soon. It will spread to the rest of the house. There are flammable structures all around. Greece fails. The markets will turn on Portugal next morning. And then it will be Ireland and Spain and ultimately Italy. And there will be nothing that can be done at that point to stop it. So the problem is right here. It is urgent. Um, the that bears on some of this question of the investment program, which I strongly, in broad outlines, favor, and particularly the components which are uh, designed to give you a sustainable environmental footprint structure going forward. It's very important. But those elements take time. They would, even if you started now, you would have time to uh, engineer, time to uh, plan, time to get the work up to scale, and you have the problem that certain partners are not capable of cooperating. The government of Greece, for example, just isn't. Now, one can make an argument about nu numerous other states, very clearly. The same is true with the fiscal and political union. That's a project for some time in the future when you have the ability, the leisure to debate big projects. Things have to be done now, uh, in very short order, because, as I say, the fire is already going on. Uh, I, you know, I, I understand the logic, and I agree with the logic of Heiner's uh, point, but I think also there's a time element there, you know, the adjustment of wages, which puts me right back in the camp that I came in with, which is that the alternative is uh, what you call transfers and what I call insurance, what I call the collective approach to manage the incomes of the community as a whole with an understanding that a large part of that community is not the working, is not the wage burning community. It's a part of the population which is either not yet in the labor force or was in the labor force and has left it or perhaps was never in the labor force. Yet one has to consider the income flows that can be stabilizing or destabilizing, and now they're terrifically destabilizing, but they could become otherwise. They could contribute to the solution to the problem. And this bears, I think, on two issues that were raised, one of them being gender and the other one being ours. The 
fact is, a great many of the older people who are uh, retired and living on the border of poverty are women. If you raise their incomes, they will no longer be on the border of poverty. And the fact is, a great many of the people who are parents, perhaps single parents heading households with children, and are also women. And if you raise their incomes and stabilize their condition, they will no longer be in the state of precarity that they're now in. This is a very useful thing to do socially as well as macroeconomically. So I think it's worth bearing in mind that it has a direct effect on the balance of, uh, on, on, on gender issues. Um, I take Heiner's point fully on the hours question. I think changing the way in which people uh, the rules that govern working time in some uniform way is a difficult thing to do. Uh, and it's a difficult thing to ask businesses to change their operating procedures. Which is why, in the general problem of um, dealing with unemployment and creating job openings for young people, I favor giving a financial, extra financial incentive to moderately older people who would like to retire anyway because they've been working for 20 or 30 years in tough jobs. Not people like us, but people who st stand behind checkout counters and move boxes around for a living or drive trucks. These people very often are ready to leave and they're hanging on only for other reasons, income, insurance. Change their incentives, they'll take care of the problem for you. And quite happily. So that's why I argue that insurance is a crucial piece of this picture. And insurance is not something that you do when you're rich, you made this point. It is something you do when you're needing. Social Security was created in the United States in 1935 in the depth of the Depression. It was done on index cards, by the way, not with computers. All you need is a population register. It is something you can do very quickly. It is simply a matter of writing checks to people's bank accounts. Right? It's all it is. And this gets to the final point I want to make, which is about the scale of things. Right? We were talking about the 260 billion a year euro. I, I don't have the European GDP as a whole in my mind, but assuming it's roughly like the US, this is what, 2 3%? You need 10. All right? To put this problem in perspective, you need three times as much, which is more than you can do with an investment program. But an insurance program, you can wrap up as much as you want. As I say again, it's simply a matter of writing checks. And you can wrap it up very quickly, and you can stabilize the situation. So it takes a little imagination. It takes thinking about what the right things to do, like employment insurance, uh, pension equalization, uh, equalization and so forth, the other things I talked about. But this needs to be, I think, on the agenda. Otherwise, the economic situation of the houses that are on fire will not be stabilized. Again, it seems to me the investment thing is extremely important, but it's one piece of a larger picture. The unpayable debts have to be regulated one way or another. Since they can't be paid, they won't be paid. The banks, the Insolvent and failing banks need to be restructured and placed under competent, honest, and detached management that is not in the business simply of owning governments. But it's actually the business of banking. The banking structure needs to be changed, the investment program and the social program on the scale that's required to stabilize the situation. Now, to close on this question of growth, I also am a growth pessimist, actually. I don't think it's reasonable to expect or to promise that you can return to the track of the post-war period. We confront problems that are going to get in the way of doing that. At the same time, negative growth is not compatible in any sustained period with a functioning private sector economy, which we have and need. Decentralized businesses work for money. They're making losses, they will collapse, which is what you're observing. So the objective needs to be to stabilize things at some level which is positive but achievable. And 
I'm not over optimistic, but realistic. And that's where I would, that's where I come down in that in that debate. And it seems to me thinking through the macroeconomics of it and the problems that we face, it's the it's the reasonable and realistic position, even though even achieving that requires a dramatic change of policy and ideas. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, uh, Jamie. Thank you all of, on the floor. Now we have two uh, um, two, two, two short um, comments. Uh, Hannes Woboda, uh, who joined us now, and afterwards the closing remarks and thank you remarks by Joe Weidenholzer, the host of this meeting. Yeah, very briefly, thank you very much. I think uh, the problem with my political life is that it's the fourth conference today where I should say closing words, which means I cannot participate at the conference and listen. The things I listened just now, and I think what Heiner Fassbeck said, yes, it is true. You have to have still a lot of work also amidst the socialist and social democratic family. Um, and uh, it's, um, it's a hard work. But this is also one of the reasons we published this uh, small book, uh, Basta Austerity, or Basta Austerity, because I think we really have to change policies. It needs some time, but it is absolutely important to go that way and to convince also our fellow citizens. It is important to come also with ideas because uh, so, uh, ideas also change the world. You know, we cannot be too Marxist, but the ideas also change the world. And this I only want to tell a very brief anecdote. When I was, uh, after some years of my studies, and two years before communism broke down, I was passing many borders in the communist countries, uh, Czech Republic, uh, Czechoslovakia, then Poland, Romania, Hungary, and so on. And my friends were very annoyed because we were stopped at each border longer than necessary because I had a small book with me by a certain John Kenneth Galbraith. And uh, the police, uh, the border guards didn't like that because there was something about freedom in it. And they took it uh, always away. We had to have this long stop. And that is always symbolic, uh, not that because of the book, uh, the communism fell down, but in the importance of ideas and the importance of of theory, because it's very, very important to have your comments, uh, because uh, to change the attitude again and again, we have to bring forward arguments. Uh, it is not easy because sometimes, you know, people have their ideology. Because today, ideology is more on the right than on the left. Not that I'm fighting for new ideology on the left, but I'm fighting against the ideology on the right. Because many of the issues you mentioned, and you mentioned always in, in different articles, even if I have a bit uh, doubt, if Syriza, for example, because I've read your article about Greece, it would really be the alternative. There are clever people there as well, I agree. But um, it is very, very important to get through this ideology which is on the right, this neoliberal ideology, and to get to the facts. And one of the facts, which was just mentioned, I remember many, many years ago when I heard it the first time, um, was uh, the productivity-oriented uh, wage policy for all Europe. Otherwise, we will have a lot of imbalances. The proofs are there, uh, but we have still to convince uh, the people to see the facts. This is one of the, the main elements we still have to work, but uh, just don't want to to prolong this uh, debate, I want just also on behalf of the group uh, thank uh, your Weidenholz and all who were active in that and thank you for coming. Um, it's not the end of our dialogue because we created also what is called the initiative of progressive economics because we have also as a political group together with uh, our network to the academic world we have to change the, the ideology, we have to change the minds of the the citizens will, and also of the politicians, perhaps more than of the citizens in general. We are not yet there, but I think it's also my, let's say, my work personally that progressive economics has to have a central role again in our political work. With that, I hand over okay. to you. So, thank you. Uh, I'm very happy that Hannes could make it, uh, despite all his obligations, and I think. It shows that for the for the group, uh, these discussions are very important, and, and this I think is is a kind of, of gesture which, which shows us uh, how how important it is for us to 
to think about uh, future uh, developments. And uh, I do not want to comment everything. I think everybody, we do, it was a long day. Some of us are tired. Many things are not solved and not answered, of course. But I hope that is the beginning of, of a debate. And I just want to say three points. I think it is, yes, it is about, about the argument. And it's about who uh, has the right argument. It's about uh, the economy. It's about the questions which school is right. And we know that if we, if we can win this debate, we can also win the political debate. And this is not easy. So it is also a political debate. And we have to interlink this, uh, this uh, different, uh, different spheres. This is one thing. The second thing is, we have to win political elections. Uh, it's about power, and if we do not have this power, we cannot change. Not, we cannot change nothing. There are elections ahead. There is the German elections, which I would say leaves us a little bit pessimistic, yeah? <laughs> to put it politely. But there is also the European le elections coming up, and I think this will be and could be an opportunity. And we have, I think, in the political group, clear visions what we want. Hannes uh, was putting at the, he said, we want a social union. Yeah? We do not want to talk only about fiscal union and about banking union. We want to talk about the social union. So uh, we, have, we have already clear ideas and we have good, uh, good uh, uh, personality. We have Martin Schulz, uh, who, who is uh, one who can bring these uh, positions to, to a point. So, I'm, I'm rather hopeful that we can, we, can, we can deliver to a change at this occasion. The problem is just, as, as, as Professor Galbraith said, the time. We don't have much time. And uh, even next year may be already too late. So what we have to do is also to mobilize uh, communities, to mobilize the trade unions, to mobilize the NGOs, to interlink them with the political sphere, uh, and I think there is some some developments now going on to to less, but there are some activities. And if we are able that, as you said, we could talk <coughs> on one day on the same things all over Europe, yeah, and not uh, one day in Greece or the second day in, in, in Germany. So if we could could actually uh, increase this mobilization factor, then I think we can we can win something and then we can uh, avoid the, the problem we are, we, are, we are actually heading to, that we are really on the brink of something and uh, that we don't have uh, much time. And I, I do not want that uh, Europe uh, becomes a kind of, not Europe in Europe, but as Yugoslavia in Europe. Yeah? So this is a bit uh, the problem and, and so we have to do everything and because I have to conclude, I have to be optimistic, and I'm an optimist, so I think we, we can do something, and we, we did something today. Uh, we had many followers also of a web stream, and we also want to uh, disseminate this information via different channels, and I want to thank everybody who joined us, from, from the assistant of parliamentarians to the commissioner, so this is, I think, uh, also a, a great quality of, of democratic participation and uh, we had people from inside the European Union and from maybe future member states from Serbia for instance so this all, all makes me optimistic so thank you very much for, for participating and thank you uh, all of you speakers for, for your, for your uh, excellent contributions and of course, uh, dear Robert, for your curating uh, work. Thank you very much. And I hope we will have uh, similar opportunities very soon. Thank you very much.